hit a motherfucker in the face over and over and over and over again until they quit. And when they quit, hit them again and again and again and again. Oh my goodness. Shout out to Ron Oliver with that mix. Big third down, more manageable. The Here We Go morning mix. Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's going to have a great game day. Well, yeah, I hope everybody's going to have a great game day. I hope, well, except for the Buffalo Bills, I hope that they're not going to have a great game day. I don't know about you, but man, I can't believe it's week 15 already. The season takes too long to get here, and it seems like it goes away too fast. We're going to be here at the Joe Boo Sports Man Cave live streaming. We got my man DMV and E2 Blue and the crew will be here. And hopefully the Dallas Cowboys will find a way to win against Josh Allen, who is, well, let's say, everybody says that he is and the Buffalo Bills are playing the best football in the AFC right now. One thing that is interesting, and sometimes you get lucky, and I'm going to say I, I, I've got to check and see the exact date, but am I wrong about this? Is it the Cowboys have not lost a game since Jerry Jones announced Jimmy Johnson is going to the ring of honor? I, I'm pretty sure that, that that's like four weeks ago. They haven't lost a game. Since then, I have been one of those ones that have said that karma is a thing. I believe that the things you do in life have a direct correlation to how things work out for you. I'm not one of those ones that believe that nice guys finish last. I think that I'm a nice guy. I, I'm, I'm not last, maybe second to the last, but I'm not last. Sometimes you get lucky in football because it's not enough just to be a great team and, and great coaches. You need luck with health. You need to be playing people sometimes at the right time. You need the ball to bounce your right way. Sometimes you need some calls to happen that change things for you. If the call's not made for Kansas in the Kansas City game for the Bills, they're not in a position right now where they have a chance to get back to the playoffs. It's a fact. If we had had some luck in health against the Cardinals and had Tyron Smith and Zach Martin and Beatis playing. Maybe we win the Cardinals game and we're way ahead of everybody else for the number one seed. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you get unlucky, but to, to literally win a Super Bowl, you got to thread the needle. You can't tell me that the Eagles weren't the best team last year playing a Pat Mahomes on one leg. They did everything right. They got the coaching staff. They got the players. They had health on their side. You know, they had great game plans. They ended up having, they surprised everybody because Jalen Hurts was the first year of really starting. And they took advantage of it, but still that wasn't enough. And I've always felt like this vendetta that Jerry Jones has had against Jimmy Johnson has always been the problem. Just enough to slow us down. Now, here's where it kind of, I, I think it's good news. Now, now you, you can look at it differently. I'm, we know we're going to have a lot of Cowboy fans there in Buffalo. People were like, hey, let's go to the game, Buffalo. I was like, when, when the game first came out, I said, are you kidding me? Buffalo in December? Oh, no, no, bro. Lake Effect Snow, I'm not trying to be caught in a blizzard. It's 50 degrees to there today. 50 degrees. There is going to be light rain. A quarter of an inch of rain is going to fall starting later this afternoon. They said a steady rain, okay? But 
at least it's not cold and snowy. This is an opportunity for the Dallas Cowboys to honestly get their shit together again. It's crazy that, you know, people are saying this is a must-win game for the Dallas Cowboys where the Cowboys have won five games straight. It's them and San Francisco with the longest win streaks in the NFL right now. That's it. That's the list. You have to go all the way down to the Giants with three-game win streak next. It's hard to win games in the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys have a little bit of illness going on, a little bit of an illness. You know, uh, Micah Parsons got us sick, and he apparently got the Eagles sick because Jalen Hurts, of course, did not practice yesterday after being humiliated the day before with the good old pushing him with the broom, okay? It's, it's, it's bad enough he's getting pushed in the tush. Now he's getting stuck with the broom. I, Philly things. That's all I can say. Philly doing Philly things. But today is that opportunity to basically in the prime time slot going against the guy everybody says is the quarterback. This is your opportunity to go ahead and say, yeah, okay. Just watch. Hold my beer. And take another step further and put pressure on the Philadelphia Eagles. This is an interesting take from Chris Long talking about the Buffalo Bills. Now, my take on the Buffalo Bills is they're a good team. They're a good team. A very, very good team. But as I talk about the New York Giants... Here's where it's kind of crazy because, you know, people say, well, if the Bills win this game that, you know, all of a sudden Josh Allen's got to vault to the top of the list of MVP candidates. I don't know if you all realize, but over the last four weeks, Tommy DeVito has a better record and better numbers than Josh Allen. Just saying. I mean, they, need, they, they needed this one bad. And we were saying this yesterday during the game. Are they the best team in the AFC right now? I like, because mm -hmm. I don't see a team in the AFC that, you know, you want to say the Ravens, people are going to laud that, you know, their performance yesterday. I saw a team that's still working through some things offensively. Okay. You're going to say, oh, they scored 30 something points. Yeah. They punt return for a touchdown and two blown coverages. The deep balls are sprayed all over the place. I think they're still working on the Mark Andrews thing. Miami's still got to beat somebody good. You know, I might have say not. Miami's the best team in the AFC if they just start beating good teams. Right. Uh, and then and then you look at Kansas City. They're wounded. They're imperfect. Jacksonville, um, I actually am not going to be that down on them. I actually feel better about the Jags yesterday after yesterday, Rich, because, because that's a tough place to play. How many people are scoring 30 points or close to it mm -hmm. on the Browns at home? Mm -hmm. And Lawrence actually didn't look that bad. But I do think the Bills, if they slide in, nobody wants to play that team because the defense is starting to play a little bit better and uh, they're starting to learn how to play with each other. Whereas a month ago, you know, it was like, oh man, all these new pieces. And um, I think I think Dorsey being gone was probably the right decision. Although McDermott tried to lose that game yesterday. The clock management at the end of it was like insane, dude. Well, that's the whole point with Bills fans, and that, that was the, the issue all week long was, you know, the, the Ty Dunn written deep dive on McDermott and his, um, his personality and what's going on behind the scenes for the last several years. And Poor choice there. Poor you know, choice, Sean. You know, I mean, good Lord. Um, and he apparently apologized for it then, and then he apologized for it again now. And then it's the it's it's how tidy is at the end of games and how the teams feel it, which is why the Bills lose close ones and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But hey, they won it yesterday, which is why the the headline of the uh, the Buffalo news kind of you know um, hit it directly on the head. The headline was "Shake It Off," um, which is a, a nice little nod. Uh, Swift. Who, I know that. Who was, uh, <laughs> Shake it off in the stands for uh, the boy who's karma on the Chiefs.
you know and oh so so, the, so they're they're kind of that's the whole thing is just like who are the who the hell are the bills and and with you saying that it's a wide they're josh open, allen and but he's right he's as good as as good as josh um, allen plays yeah. that's how far as they can go that play on the sideline right tomorrow some of these qb runs yeah. when he is good there is nobody better when he is like when he is off peak, peak josh allen i don't know if there's a guy that that i mean mahomes right but outside of that, like yeah. I gotta look, I gotta look real hard at at peak Josh Allen. Now it's the one pick he did throw one yesterday. It's it's uh, some of these turnovers, but they've been down since uh, Brady took over, and I, I I really am bullish on them because now they gotta they gotta it's had at least they, one they every just game. can't afford to lose more than one game. They still have Dallas and Miami. If they go to Miami with everything on the line, how do you not like them? Catch the Rich Eisen show every single right, day. So th there you have it. How do you not like them in Miami? So they've got room to lose one. Is that the one to be lost, the one today? I sure hope so because I would love to continue this streak. And um, we're going to get out of here because we got a lot to do to get ready for game day here. I got to get that prime rib roast in the oven uh, for our big sub and get the place, all the TVs fired up, get Joe Boo in his spot and everything else. I'm going to end this morning with Jimmy Johnson, because Jimmy Johnson, um, I can't wait till next week when he's inducted into the Cowboys ring of honor. And I'm glad that they've been able to bury the hatchet and that maybe just maybe the football guy smile on the Cowboys because of it. You're up. And then James Harris, uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the hall of fame. Uh, watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on, <laughs> and go fishing with you. <laughs> right, Mark. But um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and thoroughly disgusting to watch. Having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths, what was that like? And the second part of this question would be, I uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys, how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great, you know, group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach, and he, he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuane at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous stats, staff said get rid of him because he was too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third round pick, a 245 pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved St uh, Stepnoski to center. Uh -huh. And then we took a seventh round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had struggled his early years. We moved him to guard and took a third round pick, Eric Williams at right tackle. So, you know, those players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, you know, the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years, we were able to win that Super Bowl. So it was a great feeling. Thank you very much on that. I'll follow up about Charles Haley. Yes, he's a character. <laughs> he's he is a, a character, character but he loop. is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few uh, rocky roads uh, there early in his 
career at Dallas. Uh, we had a couple of run-ins, but we, we really got together. You know, really, he came into my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games, And he said, Coach, he said, if you will just get on to me one-on-one in your office, he said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I, I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I, I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try. But from that time forward, we had a great relationship, and he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much, and how about them?